Hello, my name is Dimitri Talapin, and today I will introduce our recent work where we studied properties of new amazing class of materials that combines electronic structure of quantum wells and processability of colloidal quantum dots. These materials can be made by very inexpensive and scalable solution phase techniques where we can achieve a true atomic precision. And we show that uh, by using very simple techniques such as printing, uh, these materials can be transformed into uh, or used as uh, lasing media with, uh, to operate in different spectral ranges from blue to green to yellow to red. And um, in, in the following sections, uh, the members of our team will introduce different steps of this work from solution phase synthesis to fabrication to testing uh, optical properties of this new amazing class of materials. Please enjoy. Hi, everyone. My name is Igor Fedin. I am a grad student in Dmitry Talapin's lab at the University of Chicago. Today, we'd like to demonstrate that a novel class of semiconductor nanomaterials, colloidal quantum wells, can be used as a new medium for solid-state lasers. Our materials are solution processed. This is how we synthesize cadmium selenide nanoplatelets. We inject selenium powder in octadecin into the solution of the cadmium precursor at 240 degrees Celsius. We observe nucleation of small clusters, the color change, and finally, we introduce cadmium acetate to facilitate the formation of quantum wells rather than quantum dots. Then we spin code colloidal solutions of the nanoplatelets to produce uniform films. The films luminesce in the corresponding colors under ultraviolet light. Uniform texture of the films is important for their use in lasers. My name is Chen Xing Shi. I was a postdoc at the University of Chicago, and now I'm a chemical engineer at Boeing Research and Technology. I'm going to explain to you green and the red amplify the spontaneous emission. The work was done at the University of Chicago and the Argonne National Lab. The excitation laser beam will hit the film surface and the ASE will come out of the glass edge and project onto this white card. I'm going to adjust the laser power from below the ASE threshold to above the threshold. And we'll see no ASE when the power is below the threshold, but ASE above the threshold. The next one is red ASE in dark, so that we can easily visualize it. No ASE below the threshold, ASE above the threshold. Hi, my name is Richard Challer. I'm a scientist here at the Center for Nanoscale Materials at Argonne National Laboratory, and I'm also an assistant professor in chemistry at Northwestern University. The Center for Nanoscale Materials is one of five U.S. Department of Energy nanoscale science research centers that's accessible and free to utilize with an approved user proposal. The same short pulses of light that we've used in this study to characterize amplified spontaneous emission and laser action in cadmium selenide nanoplatelets can also be utilized to characterize important optoelectronic properties of interest. Such characteristic properties that we've characterized in this study include absorption cross-section, which indicates how strongly material absorbs incident photons at a specific energy, the pump intensity that's required in order to develop population inversion in a solid film of particles, the length of time over which that population inversion exists in the film, as well as the length of time that's required for stimulated emission waves to build up. Nanoplatelets are a promising class of materials for lasers owing to comparatively large absorption cross-sections, low thresholds for amplified spontaneous emission, gain lifetimes of 100 picoseconds or more, and rapid development of stimulated emission waves. Future directions for this work include efforts to further reduce gain threshold, increase gain lifetime, and incorporate these materials into high-quality factor cavities. This research project represents very interdisciplinary collaborative research that we feel is ripe for further discoveries.